This lecture is about the fourth lesson in the chapter. After finishing lesson 1 magnetism, lesson 2 electrostatics, lesson 3 electric current in two lectures, the rule lecture and the theoreticals lecture. It's time now to the fourth lesson home installation. Here we will explain and discuss four titles. Electricity at homes, problems with mains electricity, connecting appliances, and finally the dangers of electricity. The first title is Electricity at Homes. To understand how electricity is connected to our homes, let's first see this circuit. This is a bulb, an electric energy consumer, and an electric battery or power supply, which is an electric energy producer. The bulb has its two connections, and the battery has its two connections. It's clear that the circuit is incomplete and the bulb is off. This diagram shows two half circuits. The bulb will not light because no electric circuit. If we make only one connection as shown, the bulb is still off. The bulb is still off because incomplete circuit. But if we connect both connections, the bulb will light because current will flow since the circuit is now closed. Now the circuit is complete and bulb lights. This is a simple example of what happens at homes. This is our electric kettle on the right. And this is the power station, kilometers away from our homes. The kettle or any other appliance must have a plug. With an electric connection between the appliance and the plug. On the other side, the power station and the socket in the wall of your room. Also, there are the cables and the wires that connect the power station to the socket. They are mainly two wires. The cable that connects the plug with the electric kettle is also composed of two wires. The plug and the electric kettle are together forming a half circuit. The socket and the power station are also the second half of the circuit. Until now, the kettle will not work because the two halves of the circuit are not connected to each other. When we put the plug in the socket, now the circuit is complete, and the electric energy supply starts. The main wire that comes with electric energy is the brown one. It is given the name live wire. The wire that closes the circuit is the blue wire, and it's given the name the neutral wire. This way of supplying homes with electricity comes with two main problems. The first one is sometimes the current of the power station increases. This may cause the kettle to damage and the wires to heat up and melt. Problem number one, if current increases. If we look inside our kettle, we will see that it is mainly made of a heating coil. This coil is connected to the brown live wire and the blue neutral wire that closes the circuit. Sometimes, by mistake, the live wire may be loose and touches the metal casing. In this case, touching the metal casing by anyone may cause an electric shock. Problem number two, if live wire touches the metal casing. Let's first see how to solve the problem of large current. A safety component named the fuse is fitted to the live wire in the plug. The fuse is made of a thin tin wire. Tin is a metal that has a relatively low melting point, so if current increases, it heats up and melts, cutting the current and avoiding it from damaging the appliance. Fuse contains the metal tin wire that melts when current increases as it heats up. Fuses are manufactured with certain values. These values are in amperes. Fuse value. A fuse value is the maximum current that can be carried by the fuse before it melts. This means that a 5 ampere fuse 
will blow if current reaches 5 amperes. But how can we choose a suitable fuse for our appliance? This value should be higher than, but close to the maximum current used by an appliance. So if our appliance works with 3 amperes, we cannot choose a 3 ampere fuse because it will blow with the normal current. We choose a fuse with a value that is next and close to the current needed by the appliance. In this case, the next and closest is the 5 ampere fuse. So that the fuse melts if this current is just exceeded. Fuses are usually made with certain values 1 ampere, 3 amperes, 5 amperes, and so on. The second problem is that by mistake the live wire may touch the metal casing. If live wire touches the metal casing by mistake, Electric current now has the ability to flow in the metal casing. The real danger comes if someone touches the metal casing. This may cause an electric shock. Since his body is now closing a circuit with earth, the current flows through his body. The solution to this problem is the earth wire. A wire of a yellow-green insulation. It connects between the metal casing and the third pin of the plug. From the other side, it connects between the socket and earth. What does this connection do? Since the live wire is now touching the metal casing, current tries to find any way to earth. If a human body touches the metal casing, his body forms the road to earth. Earth wires just to give the current an alternative way to Earth instead of human body. Since the human body has an average electric resistance of 10,000 ohms, the Earth wire has a much lower resistance than that. So the current chooses to take the way of the low resistance Earth wire rather than the high resistance human body to reach the Earth. In this time exactly comes an important rule of the fuse. Since the earth wire has a low resistance, this makes the current that is coming from the live wire normally increase. This increase in the current, which is due to the low resistance of the earth wire, causes the fuse to heat up and blow. This cuts the current from the kettle. A simple summary of what happens. If live wire touches the metal casing, this allows large current to flow from the live wire to the low resistance earth wire. This large current makes the fuse to heat up and blow. The circuit cuts and the current stops. Some appliances nowadays have plastic casing instead of metal casing. They do not have the same problem of appliances with metal casing. Here if live wire touches the casing, there is no problem at all. Because plastic is a bad conductor of electricity. This type of safety is referred to as double insulation. They have this symbol on their description plate or description sticker. Double insulation means insulated wires and live parts from inside in addition to a plastic insulated casing from outside. These types of appliances are not in the need of an earth wire. They work safely with a two-pin plug, only with a live wire and a neutral wire. The circuit breaker can replace the fuse, even it is better in many cases. The circuit breaker contains an electromagnet that is connected to the live wire of the mains electricity. This electromagnet tries to attract the gray arm. When current increases, the electromagnet becomes strong enough to pull this arm. When the arm is pulled, the spring pushes the button out and opens the contacts. So the current cuts and stop working. When the problem is fixed, simply push the button again and everything will normally work as before. The advantage of the circuit breaker over the fuse is that a fuse needs to be replaced when it blows. But for the circuit breaker, all what you need is to push the button again
to its working position. Now we will see how appliances are connected together and to the main supply. Two known types of connections, series and parallel. But the better for homes is the parallel connection for many reasons. Let's compare between two bulbs connected in parallel and two other bulbs connected in series. First, we will compare the voltage. If the bulbs are in parallel, each appliance has the same voltage as the mains voltage. Mains voltage is not divided. But for the two bulbs in series, each appliance has the voltage less than the main voltage. Mains voltage is divided between them. Each appliance will work with the full power. But in series, each appliance will work with less power. Now what about the resistance? In parallel connection, equivalent resistance is smaller than each individual one. So current supplied will be higher. But for the series connection, equivalent resistance is bigger than each one. So current supplied is smaller. Another point is controlling the bulb by switches. Each one can switch on and off separately using its own switch. But in series, they switch on and off together, wherever the switch is placed. The last point is, what if one of the bulbs is damaged and went off? In the parallel connection, if this bulb is damaged, the second bulb will continue working since it still has a direct electric connection to the supply. So we can say that if one goes off, others still work. But in series, if this bulb is damaged, it cuts the electric connection of the whole circuit with the supply. So we say in series, if one goes off, others also will go off. We can collect all these points in a table as follows. Each appliance has the same voltage as the main voltage. In series, each appliance has the voltage less than the mains voltage. In parallel, each appliance will work with full power. In series, each appliance will work with less power. In parallel, equivalent resistance is smaller than each individual one. In series, equivalent resistance is bigger. In parallel, Current supplied by the power supply is higher. In series, current supplied by the power supply is smaller. In parallel, each one can switch on and off separately by using its own switch. In series, they switch on and off together, wherever the switch is placed. In parallel, if one goes off, others still work. But in series, if one goes off, the others also go off. Dangers of electricity. Electric shocks can be produced due to damaged insulation of connecting wires. A fire can be produced if extremely high currents pass in the wires, thus producing overheating of the wires. Electric damp conditions reduce resistance of the insulators, causing them to conduct. This may cause electric shock if touched carelessly. Remember again what we talked about today. Electricity at homes, problems with mains electricity, connecting appliances, dangers of electricity.